What's going on everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo coming at you with some more good movie reviews. Today we are going to be looking into A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Freddy's Revenge is brought to you once again by New Line Studios and stars the incomparable Robert England as the titular character of Freddy Krueger. So stars Mark Patton as Jesse and was directed by Jack Shoulder. Now there's a lot to go into this movie, there's a lot of things to talk about with this movie, but we're going to try and do this one a little quicker than last, so we're going to try and get right into it, and we're going to start things off with the pros, the things that I like about this movie. Some of the stuff I like about this movie is, I like Mark Patton as an actor, he was a good actor for this film, he did well in the role of Jesse. The role of Jesse was believable with him playing it. I, of course, as always, love Robert England's performance in all of these films, even the bad ones. And this, is, to me, is not the best in the series, but it's not the worst either. There is a lot of controversy that surrounded this film. Over the years, there's a lot of different viewpoints surrounding this film over the years. But, once again, like I said, the acting from the two main characters was very good. Maybe not from some of the others, but from the two main characters, it was really good. Another big positive for me for this movie was the special effects shots in quite a few of the scenes. There's some good special effects here. Uh, some things that jumped to my mind right away is when Freddy grabs his head and pulls back his scalp and tells Jesse, you got the body, I got the brains. And you see his brains, it's a really cool shot. And then also when he slices across his chest, across Jesse's chest and Freddy comes out of his chest, that's also a very awesome scene. The effects were good. This, the performances by Robert England and Mark Patton were good. And there were some good lines in this film. One of my favorite lines from the series is in this movie. It's Freddy saying, you are all my children now. Goes that about wraps up my positives on this movie. The negatives, the cons on this movie is a little bit more extensive. The number one con that everybody in the world that's ever seen this movie picks up on, they notice, it's the thing that reviewers talk about the most, is the blatant and overly pushed homoerotic overtones of the movie. Now, I have nothing against homosexuals, please don't take it that way, it has nothing to do with that. It's, if that's what they set out to make, I'd be perfectly fine with that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. But this was a movie where for years people have denied it. And even the people making the movie said they didn't even realize it until after it was all done. Or somebody pointed it out to them years later. But the, the overtones of this movie have been acknowledged in more than one way. On multiple forums, multiple... Uh, media sites this movie has been named the gayest movie of all time and which is something the gay community actually takes some pride in and that's fine that is a great thing um the problem i have with it is that it's so much in your face it takes focus away from the movie but also mark Patton, who i think was a really good actor a very good actor at the time who himself is a homosexual at the time of filming this film, he was a closeted homosexual. And the writer of this film, who was also homosexual, knew that he was closeted, knew that he was not open about his sexuality yet. And purposely, in Mark Patton's words, purposely wrote gayer and gayer scenes and pushed him to do the role of Jesse and put more emphasis on the fact that you can tell that Jesse is a gay character. And he was very uncomfortable with that. He felt very pressured by the studio, not by the studio, but by the writer and the director because of that. And he actually left acting. This promising actor left acting for over 30 years because of those things. Now, he is now out about his homosexuality, and that is fine. That is a great thing. Good for him. And he now looks back on this movie with pride. He likes what happened in it. He likes the status it's gotten as a gay movie. 
And those are all good things. But at the time, he was very unhappy, and he still feels like he was pushed to do something that he was uncomfortable with doing at the time. And to me, that's wrong. The con for this film is the characters, aside from Jesse and aside from Freddy, I can't remember any of their names. I really can't. It's amazing, but they are all such throwaway characters. All of the characters in this movie are simple cannon fodder. They are all people that are just forgettable characters. All of the characters in this movie are so unforgettable, including Jesse's love interest. She's a pretty enough girl. There was nothing wrong there. But her acting job, her character development, none of it is good. She has a friend in the movie who I can't even remember her name. The only person I do remember his name is Grady, and the only reason I remember his name is because it's said so many times in the movie because of the overtones we spoke of earlier. Now, I will say this, my favorite kill in this in this movie is the Grady kill, but even with that being said, that is another big con in this movie, is all of the kills are just bland and boring and lackluster so boring there's nothing original about them there's nothing good about them one of them is actually disturbing in a way that not in a good way either it's not disturbing in a shocking horrific way it's disturbing in just a weird way there's really nothing good about the kills in this movie they're all very generic very bland and very uninteresting now another reviewer who i respect a lot goes by the name of cody leach he has a great channel you should check him out He's a much better reviewer than I am. But he mentioned in his review of this movie that Freddy actually has the biggest body count in this movie because of the scene where Freddy comes out into the world, into the real world, and starts killing people at the barbecue. But as I watched that scene again and again and again, I, and I did, I rewound it and watched it three times, Freddy only actually kills three people in that scene. He himself only kills three people. Now, another kid got killed because he got trampled on and his neck broke, but Freddy didn't kill him. So, I didn't see Freddy killing people left and right like a lot of people think. I saw Freddy kill three people and the rest he just scared. And that brings me to another con in this, and it's probably my biggest con, is that it changed a lot of the lore with Freddy that they had already established in the first movie. And it's like they didn't care, and they were just doing things to do them. Now, I love when Freddy's out in the real world, and he says, You are all my children now. I love that scene, because that's such an iconic line. It's so great. But that scene makes no sense. Freddy's not supposed to be able to possess somebody's body and come into the real world. That's not the way it works, at least not in that series. And none of the other movies since then have done that. Every single one of the movies stayed in the dream world, until he got to Freddy vs. Jason, and even then, it was in the dreams, in Jason's dream, I guess, in hell, that Freddy did that. So, it, it totally just broke all the lore, and it, it's like they just totally didn't care. It really felt like they were just trying to shove this movie out there as fast as they could to capitalize off the first one, which to me was a mistake, but I guess in the end it paid off because they still kept making the movies. So... The last con of this movie is there's a lot of stuff that just didn't make sense in it. A lot of the scenes were not needed, and like I said, didn't make sense at all. There's one scene where it gets really hot in the house, which, yeah, it gets really hot in the house, but there's two birds in the cage, and one of the birds kills the other birds and then goes nuts, and you're kind of meant to believe it's because of the heat. Well, the thing about it is these are tropical birds, for one. They were tropical birds that were inside the cage. And the heat shouldn't have bothered them. Plus, one of the birds spontaneously combusted in the middle of the living room while it's flying in the air. Which also made no sense. It was only 97 degrees. The movie, I don't hate this movie. I just don't. It's hard to enjoy it because it's hard to really get into it because it's so disjointed and it really feels disjointed. And aside from the fact that Mark Patton gave a good performance, and Freddy gives a good performance. That was really the only good things in this film. So, honestly, I'm going to have to say with 
Freddy's Revenge, A Nightmare on Elm Street. If you don't have to have it like I do for your collection because you collect all the horror movies and you have to have a physical copy, if you don't have to do that, just find it and stream it. You'll be happier that way. Believe me, this movie is not worth the buy. So, so anyways, guys, that is all for today. And until next time, you are all my children. Later.